Hello and welcome to Flugatronic. Up today we're going to be doing a first look at this new flute from Bryn Adams. This is what he calls the Quif Cliff Dweller design. It is a, his take on an Anastasi style tuning, which is a major tuning. This is in the key of B3, or low B. And some of the unique features of this flute um, will be taking a look at the tuning in, in just a few moments. Um, great piece of uh, Port Orford cedar. See a lot of um, interesting grain patterns and knots and so forth. My only exposure to Port, Port Orford cedar has been in uh, particularly a ukulele top and most of the most of the POC you see in ukuleles is uh, kind of straight grain stuff, like maybe the top here. Not a lot of figuring in most of it, so it's pretty pleased to uh, get this piece with a lot more interesting look to it. Okay, so let's get into why this flute. So to do that, let's go ahead and look at a comparison with some of the other flutes in my collection. So I'll switch over to this video here. So here's four flutes that are lined up uh, with the beak. Now on the top there is an easy Anasazi C. Uh, so half step above this one. Then you have the, uh, the Cliff, Cliff Dweller B. Below that is a B3 Native American style flute from Dragonfly. And then below that is the low A Easy Anasazi. So that should give you a good feel of uh, kind of the overall reach and finger spacing of these flutes. So as you can see, the B is very close to the C. Plays very much like the uh, Easy Anasazi, but we'll get into some of the differences there uh, momentarily. Um, yeah, and then you can see really just how long the reach is on that A. Um, which is probably going to be rehomed soon. The more I play with with this range of flutes, um, the harder it is to <laughs> to uh, really do that one justice. It's just a long reach for for my arms. Okay, let's look at um, this view. Shows those four flutes just lining up the first hole, so you can kind of see the overall reach and again the hole spacing, and then lining up the lower hand holes. Uh, just to give you an idea of how these might play. Now, when I talked to Brent about this, um, you can see, if you, if you go back to there, the uh, the an easy Anasazis have a little bit of an offset on the lower lower hole, and I found that useful even on the, uh, the C. Um, so I asked Brent about that. He um, showed me this one that had a very slight offset. Um, I, <laughs> I wouldn't really call that an offset, uh, but it's very slightly uh, to the right. It's just pretty much in line. Uh, but Brent's comment was, well, you really don't need it because of um, the shortened mouthpiece. So you can see if I compare this uh, to the Native American style flute, it has a much longer slow air chamber on the, the typical NAF. Um, so because of that really short, uh, slow air chamber and the reach on this B3, it's really not a problem. Um, you, you, yeah, I get along fine with, without the offset on this, so that's really not a problem. Okay, so um, I'll give you a link to Brit, Brent's uh, introduction video. He did a uh, good job of showing you some of the basic scales, major scale, and a few minor scale variations that you can play on this. Um, so what I want to do instead is, instead of uh, rehashing that, is just go over all the notes that I found and, some, and hopefully you can see fingerings for these. So to do that, um, I'm going to use my tuner app here. What you'll see on the tuner here, now another word, so I think in C, in terms of a C major scale, this is a, essentially a B major scale but I'm not gonna to learn to know names for a B major scale. I'm gonna keep it to a C. So one trick on the tuner is I'm going to 
make my tuning offset 415 hertz, which you can see here, which is basically a step down, just like this is a step down from C. And what that means is when you see the notes here on the tuner, when I blow the low note, it's going to appear as a C on, <laughs> on the tuner, even though I'm blowing B. So don't get confused by that. Uh, probably will get confused by that, but it helps me to think in terms of a C major scale. Um, but what this will let you do is see uh, the tuning, um, how close it is to, to standard pitch, and what you have to do to kind of tune some of the notes, get some of the notes in tune. So let's just start with a basic scale. So we'll kind of run up the notes uh, just from the finger holes. Okay, so that's the lower octave. And go to the higher octave. Okay, so one thing you can tell is that the, the upper octave is a good bit sharp of the lower octave. So in that respect, this plays really a lot like a, a giant whistle. Um, if you know anything about low whistles though, to get a low B whistle would be just monstrous. In fact, this is my lowest whistle. This is a D and just look how much How much more that low hand finger stretch is on the low D. So you can imagine, imagine how big it would be on a B. So to, to get a major scale um, of any sort in this uh, small a package uh, is really handy. Okay, so that's the basic uh, notes there. So let's try some of the in-between notes. I can get a uh, C sharp by half holding the, the bottom. And I'm playing it a little sharp, so it takes takes some practice to try and get that in tune. Okay, then you have all the notes coming up from that C sharp, D, E flat, E. We already saw. So then let's go G, and you can go down from the G to get an F sharp, and then an F. So let's start with a G. You can see those um, those cross finger notes are, are a good bit sharp um, of the regular notes, so you have to back off on the uh, the breath to try and get those a little more in tune. But they are there, um, and tone on those is very good. Um, compared to the Easy Anasazi, those notes, the F sharp is is kind of there, but it's very windy. The F is really just not on the Easy Anasazi style. Um, okay, so that was G. You can get a uh, an A flat. Just with one finger, and then B flat. Very handy. Then on the upper octave, again, the upper octave is going to be a good bit sharp. So when you get up um, to those notes there, um, you need some, some alternate fingerings, but you can get up to an E and even an, an F um, just with uh, the three fingers down. So let's look at some of those. Uh, again, C sharp.
that's about as far as I've gone up. So uh, C all the way up to F in, in my thinking. So that's a pretty good range, especially for a uh, uh, very, very good extended range for many Native American style flute. Um, not quite as good as say a, a whistle design, but that would have a much narrow, narrower bore uh, and longer. So um, all in all, very good trade-offs. Okay, let's try um, try a full chromatic scale. Just give um, a real brief playing sample of uh, the cliff dweller against against the others. Anasazi C. There is a difference. Um, when I just had the Anasazi, I said that this was the same uh, same scale as as the real Anasazis. It, it really is not. The uh, the back hole um, changes the the upper hand. So when you get up to that B and the B flat, it's very different. Uh, so B flat is actually all fingers, top fingers off. You get to the B, you have to take the uh, back finger off as well. Um, so there's a, a definite difference um, of having B flat and B directly uh, in the holes on the easy Anasazi. You have to cross finger the B flat on the cliff dweller. Okay, let's go to. Um, Go ahead and stick with the Anasazi. So this is the low A. And then the B, of course, this is a uh, B minor, so See if I can play play the major notes just for comparison. You can see, um, I don't know if that was off camera, but I basically I play this um, this flute with my pinky, whereas I can get the bottom hole on the C and the B Anasazis just fine with. Um, ring finger and not entirely sure why. I think it's the overall finger stretch on this is just a little bit wider than the cliff dweller. Um, so you know it just depends on your hand size and, and where your fingers fall. But this is overall much better, uh, much more comfortable uh, to play um, very close to the C. Well, I think that's all I wanted to cover today on uh, just an introduction. So go ahead and play out with a little more improv on this guy, and then we'll be getting some cover tunes and other songs together uh, in the near future.